Hello friends, for today's video I'm going to be doing the finally fall book tag. I'll have the questions in the description bar down below in case you'd like to also participate or if you'd like to answer a couple of them in the comments down below. For me, before we jump into it, fall is my favorite time of year. Fall is basically the Friday of seasons because I think technically winter is my favorite, but fall is like, ha, huh, <laughs> you can finally let out a breath that you didn't realize you were holding. Summer sucks. Where I live, summer is awful. It's so hot, I complain about it quite a bit. So you don't probably need to hear me complain about it some more, but I, I just hate the summer. <laughs> and I'm gonna mention a book in answering one of these questions, but um, the Winter Night trilogy, I feel like is an example of a story that showcases why winter is so incredibly brutal and awful. But for me, I'm like, yay. <laughs> I'm just so excited for the cooler months because it's basically paradise where I live when it's cool. So anyway, I love fall and I'm very excited to be doing this tag, even though at the time of filming this, it's not technically fall, but it will be when this goes up and I'm in denial and I'm pretending it's already fall. So I'm gonna answer now the questions. The first one is to name a book with a vivid setting. Because I mentioned Winter Night, I'll go ahead and start with Winter Night. The Girl in the Tower, the sequel to The Bear and the Nightingale, I read that earlier this year and I am a little embarrassed that I still haven't picked up the third book, but I do think because it's going to start getting cooler that now it will be really fitting to read the third book as the season shifts. But regardless, The Girl in the Tower and just this trilogy in general, the setting is incredibly vivid. I haven't come across too many books where you just genuinely feel like you're there and that the atmosphere is captured. So pre it's just such a prevalent part of not only the story, but the characters' lives day to day. And you really see that the weather itself is part of why the stakes are so high. I think it's an incredible feat that the author has accomplished very well within that series. I wrote down a few other books too. I recently read Foul Days and I loved <laughs> the setting in that one. It is also interesting, like The Girl in the Tower, uh, Eastern folklore inspiration. And I just immediately found myself really excited and gripped by that setting. I thought it was executed phenomenally. And then really quick, I also wanted to mention Cage of Dreams. This is the sequel to City of Nightmares. Uh, this setting is just so bonkers. If you don't know, the idea is that people's nightmares can come to life and then wreak havoc on the city that they're living in, which in the comp titles, it says it's like if Gotham met Strange the Dreamer. And I don't think that fully captures how weird it is, but it is a more modern city that is plagued on occasion by people turning into nightmares and their nightmares, there's no limits really to what people can dream up. So that one has a really bizarre but fun setting, even though it's <clears throat> very destructive and violent. It's also kind of funny. And then Rain and Ruin. This is the fantasy romance for fantasy readers because I know a lot of us are not opposed to picking up fantasy romance. It's just the romance tends to be more of the focus and then the fantasy elements are less so and we prefer when they're at least maybe a little more balanced and I think Rain and Ruin balances it perfectly and it's very politically driven. So for me, trying to get accustomed to the court politics was one of my favorite parts but on top of that, the world at large with the stakes and the way that the magic works, I thought was really fun to explore. I've done reviews for that one as well as Foul Days. So if you're interested in those, I'll have those more in-depth reviews linked since I'm obviously kind of going through it rather quickly. The next question has to do with a book that has themes of loss and or grief. And I'll go ahead and say the spell shop for this one. The spell shop is such a perfect fall read and it honestly could fit within the first question. It could probably fit in some of these other prompts as well. But I did find that the way in which the character thinks about how her life has changed, what's different now and specifically involving people that she loved who are no longer there with her. I thought that was the extra little piece of the puzzle. Meaning I felt like this book is really cute. It is really wholesome and cozy. But by having that element tied in, I think it gave the book, not that it was much needed depth, but for me, it's what made it so that it was more than just cute and cozy. By having those themes, I thought it really made it a very well-rounded, fantastic story. I am not going to say too much, but a very, very, very prominent part of 
the book that I have written, my second book, which is a sequel. So the first book is called Peace and Turmoil. The second one that, fingers crossed, will be coming out very soon, uh, Remnants of Dawn, is very much rooted in grief. And it was always intended to be that way based off of events that occur at the end of the first book. It's just that I did not expect when I plotted out the story years and years ago, I didn't expect that I would also be experiencing grief at the same time. So I think that while I don't want to say that somehow I have authority on the topic or anything like that, I do think writing that grief as I was experiencing it was hopefully something that for any of you that do end up picking the story up, it's something that you can feel and and maybe feel represented by if you've experienced loss and grief as well. But anyway, <laughs> question three, a nonfiction recommendation. I sadly have not had a chance to read as much, as much uh, nonfiction as I would have liked this year, but I did read Long Walk to Freedom by Nelson Mandela and I highly recommend picking it up. It is a very long book, and in a way, despite being so long, I feel it really only scratches the surface on so many things because it is both telling you about his life, he is telling you about his life because it's an autobiography, but it's also talking about apartheid and the things that South Africa was facing during Nelson Mandela's life. So for me, it was like I was learning so much, but I don't feel in any way that I know nearly enough about that topic. I do want to learn more about it, but still, I thought that this book really was wonderful and devastating and really enlightening. Question four, a fictional family or household or friend group that you would want to be a part of. When I was prepping my answers to this tag, I had at the time not yet read... A Sorceress Comes to Call, and having since read that, I am now going to say that as my answer because this story follows two main perspectives. One is a 14-year-old girl whose mother is a sorceress and who has been mistreated her entire life by her mother. Her mother has plans to try and marry a wealthy man. That man's sister ends up being the other perspective. And she is a woman who is in her 50s and she has a certain friend group in the story that she talks with and tries to plan things out with and run certain ideas by. And that group of people is so vibrant and full of life and funny and I just wanna hang out with them. I wanna be friends with all of them. I want them to be real people. I loved them so much. I loved them so much. She alone was already a fantastic character, but all of her friends too, I was like, man, I just love these characters so much. So I'm going to say them. My initial answer before would have been Unbound. This is a dragon rider fantasy story. And it's mostly just because there's this one little dragon that is very curious and it's always trying to learn more about anatomy and how to make certain things that'll help people. And I love it so much. It's so cute. Plus I want a dragon in general. I don't want that dragon because that dragon is doing experiments and you know, they need to have time for that. But I just, I want a dragon to bond, which they have in this world. So there's a party that's like, can I just have a dragon though? That's all I want. Next thing would be to show a stack of fall colored spines. So we'll segue into that and then we'll return to the next question. Six says to mention a story where someone is telling you their life story. And this is supposed to be representative of sitting by a campfire, being told a tale. A story that fits this really well that I picked up this year would be The Lost Story. And this didn't actually end up entirely working for me, despite the fact that I thought it not only had really important themes in it, but I did really like the way that the themes were represented. I really thought that The book did a fantastic job of showing just how much when somebody has caused you harm, how much that sits with you, impacts you, and can for years and years to come. Despite those things, the reason this book didn't entirely work for me is that I guess you could say it's similar to how certain other sort of more cozy fantasy stories end up where they can really lean into the cute and wholesome factor, which I love, but sometimes it goes so far in that direction that it doesn't quite feel as real anymore. This is one that I go kind of back and forth on because I did really love the themes and I liked how they were represented. And I think it's 
just one of those things where the balancing out of the cute and wholesome with these heavy themes is going to be a case-by-case basis. I think a lot of people are going to really love this, but for me, it was just kind of it's not that it was taking away from those things. I complimented the spell shop for feeling like it was very well-rounded. For me with this one is it felt like we had a lot of the the right ingredients, but <laughs> this is such a stupid analogy, but it's almost like the baking time wasn't long enough or something where I liked the individual ingredients. I just think that the end result didn't quite work for me. However, there is somebody that's telling you the tale and the way that they're doing it is pretty clever and I thought was a fun play on the typical fairy tale narrator. The next question is something that is dark and or creepy and I'm gonna say two things. Empire of the Wolf. This is a trilogy where the first one is Justice of Kings. In the second book is where you start to see it leaning more into horror fantasy and I gotta say, the things that occur, I almost don't know if I can say too much because I don't want to reveal that for anybody that picks it up, but it kind of, there is some necromancy aspects to the story. And uh, this kind of like glimpse into the beyond, I'll say, within this story, to me, was terrifying. I still think about it sometimes. I, I know it's stupid. I don't know. There's just like, an aspect, of, an element to this that I find frightening. And then the Fireborn Blade, uh, to me, I've described this as being almost leaning into psychological thriller fantasy, because as our character is descending into a dragon's lair, they're, one, having to get closer and closer to the ghosts of the people that the dragon has killed in the past, and there are certain aspects with that that are pretty terrifying when you uncover more about them. But then also just the grasp on reality starts to get twisted and morphed, and that to me made for a relatively creepy reading experience. Next up, very different from that, a short, heartwarming read. Oh, where do I start? There's so many. Like I said before, I definitely think the spell shop can fit in a lot of these, and that includes this one, but I have three other things to mention. So... Kiki's Delivery Service, I think, is the thing that came to mind first because it is really short and it is so cute. <laughs> and I know a lot of people know Kiki's Delivery Service through the Studio Ghibli film, and that film is fantastic and I love it so much. But that said, it was based off of the book and the book is absolutely darling. And then Bookshops in Bone Dust and also You Can't Spell Treason Without Tea. I do think that both of these are really lovely cozy fantasy stories and cozy i mean it's pretty much baked into it right short heartwarming read that's what a lot of cozy fantasy is the next one an old favorite i'd like to reread the lioness quartet the song of the lioness or the alana series i loved these growing up definitely think that they set a pretty high bar for me as a kid for what i liked in my fantasy stories and i think that's one of those stories that i've been chasing that ever since that feeling of that kind of character development and just getting lost in a story. And I really want to reread it. There's also part of me that's scared though, because I'm like, what if I don't love it as much, which is a stupid fear. It's not a big deal, but I did really enjoy it. And I do want to reread it. And I, I already had a bind up of all four, but I just really had a, I was going to say a craving. That's a weird way to put it, but I really wanted the copies that I had as a kid, which were black because there's a lot of different editions of this series and some of them are cool and some of them are less cool but I the particular set I had I absolutely loved and I found a set on Pango which is a basically like a used bookstore in app form and so I now have those I'm like I really have no excuse to not pick them up <laughs> I even have these like old copies that I'm not going to feel bad if they're a little bit broken in the spines and things like that. The last question is cozy reading accessories that I love. And I don't think there's any one specific thing, but if I were to, because I oftentimes, if I'm going to read a book, I like to set aside a lot of time to read. I don't like reading in bits and pieces. So if I'm going to be sitting for a long time reading, these are the things that I tend to have. I'm just going to tell you the whole reading experience. So there's a chair, in the room behind this one <laughs> that is big and giant and comfortable and orange. And Luna also loves that chair. So I have to try and get in that chair before she gets in that chair, which then I do always feel bad. But anyway, that's besides the point. So the chair 
And then I often will take a pillow from my bed so that I can like prop up my book. And then there is a footrest in front of the chair. So I often have that for if I want to stretch out my legs. And then there's this thing I have called a flippy, which I think is more so if you're watching something on your iPad or if you have some kind of e-reader. But sometimes it's nice for the book. It's kind of like a little pillow book stand, if you will. And then headphones, because I like immersion reading, so some kind of headphones. And then a blanket, so I can be really cozy. I have two little side tables. <laughs> to put stuff on. And speaking of putting stuff on, I usually have my, sorry to make things shake, I usually have some water. And then also I usually have a drink. And then I have a bookmark. So it's not any one specific accessory, but if I'm really getting cozy and reading a bunch, that's what I bring with me. But anyway, that's it for the finally fall book tag. As I said at the beginning, feel free to answer any of these questions or just chime in. Are you also really excited about fall? Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you later. Bye.